I thought I'd make a short video explaining what I've learned about creating level of detail models, known as LODs, for Unity. While I worked on the Castle Valley collection, I developed a lot of ideas and little tricks that improved the quality and reduced the number of problems. The goal is to reduce the triangle count when objects are far from the camera by making simpler versions of the object. The problem is that changing the geometry of an object can change how the shape, light, and shadows behave. And that causes a pop or jump when Unity switches between each version of the mesh. This is most visible in harsh lighting with a lot of contrast. The goal is to build LODs which have the least noticeable pop so we can change to the simpler meshes as soon as possible. All right, so first, if you want Unity to set up the LOD group component for you, be sure to save your LODs in the same file with a mesh name followed by underscore capital LOD zero and then one, two, three, etc. The LOD group component has a slider showing the different LODs and their transition zones based on their size on the screen. You can drag the camera to see what the transitions look like and drag the edges of each zone to adjust. Right click opens a dialog to add or delete a zone and clicking a zone lets you add or subtract mesh renderers manually. Unity's skinned meshes require that all of the various body pieces and LODs are in the same file. Otherwise, they won't act as a single unit when animating. Now this is pretty important. There's a global way to control the LODs with something called the LOD bias. It's in your project settings. Higher numbers push out the distance of the LOD 0 to LOD 1 transition. You can also set the maximum LOD detail here. In HDRP, it's in the HDRP default setting menu, and in the standard pipeline, it's in quality settings. So the big question is how many LODs do you really need? It's a trade-off between more LODs giving you larger vistas through triangle count reduction, and uh, this is especially important for skinned meshes, which are more expensive to render, and the LODs will glitter less at a distance. But each LOD is extra work. LOD popping is going to happen to some degree. LODs eat space in the baked light map, and there's going to be a small cost storing the extra geometry. I think environmental assets should have at least one LOD, while top-down games may not need any LODs at all. So as an example, this worker ant has six LODs. Because it could be as small as an ant or as big as a cow and also appear in swarms, while the queen has no LODs at all because she's a boss monster and it's not worth the work. Here are some things to keep in mind while you're working on your original asset. First, remember that UV seams are going to guide the decimation process. Your LOD can't make one triangle take the place of two triangles if those two triangles don't share the same UV island. So be thoughtful about UV seam placement, and all of this goes for hard edges also. Watch how this UV layout is guiding and, in the end, limiting the decimation process. While using the same starting mesh, but a totally different, less cut up UV layout gives very different results. While you plan your UVs, try to keep your UV islands as convex as possible. Concave or C-shaped cuts run into trouble when the decimator starts shortcutting across the curve, exposing more and more untextured space. Where it really goes wrong is if you place other UV islands inside of those curves and you end up with overlap. The same goes for donut holes. Inspect your original mesh's UVs once they're packed and adjust things away from the concave edges. You're still not done with the UVs. The decimator will try to remove gentle curves before sharp corners. So go ahead and straighten out slight curves in preparation for a lower poly count that can't quite follow those smooth curves. At this point, you can bake your textures. All right, so now it's time to talk about the actual decimation process. The important thing is that your decimator preserves the UVs. Fortunately, we at least have a lot of choices when it comes to picking our decimator. To varying degrees, all of the major 3D software has the ability. But from what I've seen, Maya and Blender seem to be the better choices. Blender even lets you weight paint the decimation process, and it seems to have the cleanest results. 
Let me take a second to address the subject of these automatic LOD generators. They're far better than nothing, they save a lot of time, and everything in this video up to now still applies to them. But our goal here is to make the highest quality LODs that we can. But with any auto-generated LODs, what you get is what you get. So from here on, I'll go over things you can do to improve your decimated LOD meshes. As a rule, I like each LOD to be about half the triangle count as the previous one. Since LOD0 is the original version of the mesh, I usually end up creating LOD1, 2, and 3. This means that a 10,000 triangle mesh is going to end up around 1,000 triangles. Now so far, every decimator I've tried tends to create some flaws. You'll find that it creates some needle-shaped triangles, and in some cases they're so extreme that it flips one of the triangles upside down, which really screws with the rendering since the normals are off by 180 degrees. So after I create the LOD, I rotate any folded or inefficient edges in 3D Studio. Using a simple smooth material and checking for shading errors, or rendering a UV template with overlap warnings helps me spot any bad edges. But be careful, don't turn edges that are on the edge of a UV island, or you'll get a massive texture smear. This is a good time to deal with any triangles that survived the decimation process, but are too tiny to bother rendering at a distance. At this point, do a quick scan of the UV map and look for anything out of the ordinary and fix any problems. I like to generate the next LOD based on the previous LOD with all of its adjustments rather than the original mesh. This prevents duplicating work and you're starting from a lower poly solid mesh. Also, be on the lookout for too much shrinking in the overall volume of your LODs. Since the decimation process tends to shortcut across shapes, it always removes some of the mass of the object. If your original mesh had a second UV map for baked lighting, it may have been nuked by the decimator. Now is the time to rebuild that. Be aware that for static items using baked lighting, the light map scale should be smaller and smaller for each LOD. Unity does this automatically, but if you set up the LOD group yourself, you'll need to double check. Now when the LOD group switches meshes, the shadows are going to shift a bit because we are changing geometry, and that's just a fact of life. But the biggest contributor to that pop at the moment of transition is actually the normal map. Normal maps are deeply related to the mesh geometry. Look how badly this test model reacts to removing the subdivision, even though the shape stays essentially the same. When bevels are removed, you can end up with nearby normals that are off by almost 90 degrees. Not all models have such drastic reactions, but the sharper your angles, the more obvious the problem. At the same time, color is barely affected if we prepared the model properly. So for those worst case scenarios, you may need to bake a second normal map to properly reflect the new mesh geometry of your LOD. The resolution can be 50% of the original, and you'll have to manually assign the new second material to the LOD meshes. The more decimated your LOD, the more likely you'll have trouble if you don't use a cage when you rebake the normals. Now obviously there's a cost to having a second normal map and material, so this is a judgment call you're going to have to make on a case-by-case -case basis. Sometimes decimation can hit a hard limit, where a model that has too many UV cuts or has complex geometry never hits that low, low poly count you need for the longest distance. So in these cases, you may need to make a simplified mesh from scratch. In this example, I sort of blanketed the entire rock pile and baked everything onto this very simple mesh, which gets its own super low res material. And finally, it's time to mention the way LODs interact with the baked lighting. The worst is the old Enlighten. It bakes LOD zero only, and the other LODs rely on the light probes alone. Progressive CPU works just fine, and it bakes all of the LODs. Bakery from the Asset Store is fast and does an even better job of fixing up all of the seams. But at the time I'm making this video, Progressive GPU is another story. It's still in preview, and any prefab with an LOD group renders with bright and dark blotches as if only a few rays are being cast. It's only good for rough draft lighting. So there you have it. That's everything I've got for making LODs. You can see the difference, but hopefully your players won't notice that you're using LODs at all. 
Well, if enough people find it interesting, I'll put in the extra effort and uh, make more of these. See you next time.